We're going to discuss spontaneous bacterial peritonitis in this video, also abbreviated SBP. And SBP basically, uh, by definition, is an infection uh, of the acidic fluid uh, that can build up. Now, what do I mean by acidic fluid? What is that? Well, I guess um, most of you, of course, know what ascites is. It's uh, increased or accumulation of fluid in the abdomen, and in particular that peritoneal cavity, which is the space in between the organs and the abdominal wall. And uh, ascites uh, can happen in alcoholics, and it can happen in a lot of uh, uh, tropical infections as well. Hepatitis is another cause and things like that. But when this acidic fluid becomes infected, that's when you develop this SBP, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. It's a very basic uh, definition. Now, uh, uh, organisms that are responsible for infecting uh, that acidic fluid include E. coli, uh, and they, it's also Klebsiella. Klebsiella can also cause an infection, and Streptomyces, interestingly, is also uh, one of the causative organisms. And um, these organisms are usually singular. It's usually a singular organism uh, that's the infected uh, that infects the acidic fluid. It's usually not uh, multiple. Okay, so then let's talk a little bit about the symptoms. The symptoms of uh, SBP basically uh, involve um, a lot of the same symptoms that you'd have with ascites. You remember ascites is a big swollen belly, um, almost looks like the person's pregnant. Um, but um, with uh, infection you can also get uh, some additional symptoms. So some of the symptoms of ascites include of course abdominal uh, distension. Uh, you can also have abdominal pain. Um, pain or tenderness, whichever way you want to describe it. Um, another thing uh, is um, dullness to percussion. This is a very important uh, physical exam finding. Uh, when you ask the person person to turn to the side and you tap the abdomen, it's, it's very hard because of that fluid accumulation. Now when you get SBP, which is of course an infection of that acidic fluid, you can also develop fever, you can develop malaise. The person's uh, hepatic failure uh, can worsen as a result. So those are some of the basic uh, signs. It's pretty obvious. Uh, I mean, ascites is obviously pretty obvious, but if a person with ascites comes to the ER or hospital with fever and malaise and, and um, uh, worsening abdominal pain, then it's a, it's a pretty uh, diagnostic uh, symptom, symptoms and signs. Well, how do you diagnose it for sure? Well, you do something called an abdominal paracentesis. And uh, these are done quite often uh, because um, these types of patients actually, there's such a strong recurrence that they have to keep coming back to get this paracentesis. And a paracentesis, essentially, you, uh, you're you draining the, f the acidic fluid. Uh, you insert a small needle. Uh, and um, you drain that fluid. Once the fluid is drained, you analyze it. You analyze the acidic fluid. Uh, uh, you do a culture. Um, you can do a gram stain. And you can uh, uh, discover a lot of things with these uh, tests. You can discover the etiology and you can discover the, the content uh, of the uh, what's inside the acidic fluid and that can help you uh, determine what's uh, going on. And like I said, um, 70% of the time, uh, people with um, uh, ascites uh, will um, most likely um, recur. So the recurrence rate is very high. So the abdominal paracentesis kind of acts like a band-aid, you know, it's not really a cure. They develop uh, this ascites, uh, SBP, they come, they get the fluid drain, and then sometime later they have to come back. So it's kind of a back and forth. The treatment of this, obviously, well, the treatment involves, you know, the paracentesis. I mean, I guess the paracentesis can be kind of thought of as a diagnostic tool and a treatment. But uh, the real treatment of SBP 
spontaneous bacterial peritonitis when there is an infection is of course antibiotics. And the treatment of an acute SPP is usually a cephalosporin like cefotaxime. And uh, because um, SPP can recur, um, you also want to give prophylactic antibiotics. So remember, this is for the treatment, but prophylactic antibiotics are given to prevent uh, or at least reduce recurrence. And quinolones, fluoroquinolones are used. Uh, and remember, the one that uh, I, I've always seen on uh, licensing exam is levofloxacin. So remember that. That's the one for prophylaxis. Um, I've got a couple clinical vignettes I'd like to go through, and here we go. 56-year-old man is admitted to the hospital for fever and abdominal pain. He has a history of cirrhosis and is known to be hepatitis C positive. He was diagnosed with cirrhosis four years ago. His only medications are spironolactone and propanolol. He reports that five days ago he had a fever up to 102 and gradual onset of diffuse abdominal pain. On exam, he has a fever, 101. His blood pressure is 100 over 50, pulse is 110, and regular. Lungs are clear. He has numerous spider angiomata on his thorax and back. Abdomen is massively distended. Shifting dullness by percussion. Lab uh, studies show leukocytes of 13,200, hematocrit 33, uh, prothrombin time of 15, albumin was 0 0.1, sodium 135, potassium 4.7. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in diagnosis? Diagnosis. Well, you've got a lot of uh, great clues in this um, vignette. You've got fever, you've got abdominal uh, pain, uh, abdominal distension. Um, and then you've got that great uh, shifting dullness. Uh, that's a great uh, physical exam finding. You ask the person to turn to their side, and then you tap on their abdomen, um, and uh, it'll, it'll be very, very hard. Well, this most likely, and the, com combined with the fact that he has liver disease, um, most likely means he, he has a person with ascites that now has become infected. And as a result, he's developed SPP. And they're asking, how do you diagnose it? Well, if you remember, the main thing to do initially with the diagnosis um, is you do an abdominal paracentesis, and then you take the acidic fluid and you send it for analysis, culture and gram stain. So the answer is D. And then finally, a 62-year-old woman is admitted to the hospital with severe ascites and fever. She has a two-year history of portal hypertension secondary to hepatitis C-induced cirrhosis. Four months prior to admission, she suffered an upper GI bleed secondary to esophageal varices, which uh, was subsequently banded by via endoscopy. Two days ago, the patient developed abdominal pain, increasing abdominal girth, and fever. She was admitted to the hospital with the diagnosis of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, SBP. The appropriate therapy is initiated, and over the course of the next four days, the patient appeared to res be responding well. On the day of discharge, you begin to plan her outpatient management and follow-up care. To prevent further disability from her current acute condition, you should prescribe. Uh, ver another very good question. Uh, they've given you a lot of clues. So what's happened here is uh, this is obviously a, a patient with liver disease, and she's most likely an alcoholic. Uh, how do I know this? Well, I, I I don't know this for a fact, but I'm assuming because she had esophageal varices that she's most likely an alcoholic. And um, as a result, uh, she's now got ascites, which is pretty obvious. I mean, that that, that kind of tells you right there. And then the fact that she's come to the hospital with fever and, uh, well, it even tells you she has ascites. So the fact that she's come to the hospital with fever means that she's developed SPP and the, the, the question even tells you that. Now interestingly in the f latter part of the question they said that the appropriate therapy is initiated. So what I'm thinking is that they're giving her cephalosporins because if you remember the treatment is a, a cephalosporin most commonly uh, cepho, if I can spell it, cephotaxime now what are they asking? They're asking to prevent further disability from her acute condition you should prescribe. 
What they're really asking for now is what do you do for prophylaxis? And if you remember the prophylaxis um, the, of SBP involves fluoroquinolones and most commonly that fluoroquinolone is levofloxacin which would be C. Fluoroquinolone, FQ for short.